Okay. Are we off? We are. Happy Sunday, Alfie. Happy Sunday, Freddie. Um, sorry, folks. We had a bit of a problem here with science. We are. We are well, which is absolutely <laughs> and basically correctly. we are talking science today. Um, is it still working? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Look, uh, as you know, Freddie, um, Quatermass and the pit, or Quatermass, mm. Professor Quatermass. Um, it's going to be quite a complex. But this might run over two weeks, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Blind me. That's a lot of recording time. Two whole weeks. Yeah. You know, it's a serial. Um, okay. So what? I've had a week to actually get this together, and I've hit a blank. <laughs> um, 1950s, England. Um, this was a period, as I keep on saying, when we was coming out of the the war, and um, the BBC, in their wonderful way at that particular time, hit upon an idea. Um, right. Science fiction mm -hmm. on television filmed live basically in the studio and it went out live oh wow and um, so obviously if you watch it now in black and white there's a lot of stomping strange noises but uh, at the time it was seen as a really bold experimental idea to do a particular program and it was um, based around a scientist called Quatermass, who um, represented a sort of, because remember this is soon after the Second World War, which I keep going back to, is that okay? Yeah. We keep on saying it's okay, which I keep on going back to. And Quatermass is a scientist, he's quite a unique individual, he's very English. Right, okay. In, in, so far, In what sense, yeah. Um, he appears to be a very established figure, this, this particular character, but he's not. He's quite a revolutionary, rebellious scientist. He, he goes off in all directions um, when he's working something out. Anyway, we'll come back to that another time. The first Quatermass was screened on BBC Live in 1952. Right. which surprised me completely and it was called the Quatermass Experiment and it concerned Second World War, the Allies, England, America and Russia. No Frenchmen. No, no, French, no, no, no French, no. No French. No French. No French. And they get sent up in this rocket ship into space to see if the rocket ship goes up into space or not. Okay. Nothing, you know, it's to do with um, an alliance and the Cold War and all that. Rocket ship comes back to Earth. Fine. Except when it lands, there's only one person alive in the spaceship. Whack. I know, terrifying. Which one? Englishman. Oh, of course, that's all right. Yes, yeah, sturdy well, stuff. Know, yeah, um, it is an Englishman. Uh, uh, and the problem is, where are the other two spacemen? So they disappeared, it's not that they're dead in the ship. They've they're not dead, they've, they've disappeared. disappeared. Right, okay. They've gone somewhere. And there's a problem with that, isn't there? Where are they? Oh well, yeah. What's gone wrong? And this is where Quatermass comes in to try to sort out. There's a serious problem here. And they can't sort out what's gone wrong at all. But the, the English survivor begins to show signs of um, emotional disturbance. Panic Fist of the vapours. Yeah, he's sort of, you know, he's, he, he's coming out in rushes as well. You know, right. okay. And um, it transpires that everything he touches, every surface, he begins, his fingers turn into it. So if he touches like a piece of wood, with a piece of wood. If he touches a plant, with a piece of a plant. Also like at the molecular level, things that he touches turn into what he's touching. Yeah. So 
over a period of weeks, this poor guy who is being experimented on is beginning to um, change into something unseen before. Like a sort of super chameleon. Um, well, it's something worse, it's something quite horrible actually. Yeah. He, everything, he t everything he goes near, everything he touches, he becomes. It's a sort of King, mm. King Midas problem. Yeah, yeah basically, yeah. He, he doesn't touch gold, but <coughs> Kratomass works out that what's happened is that two other spacemen have drilled into his into this other spaceman's body. Right. So they're in his body. Okay. Oh, oh right. Okay. They're drilled. And they're forming something in his body. But at the same time, he's forming into something else as well. Basically, he's forming into a monster. Right. Um, well, to cut a long story story, what happens is that he does become this massive great monster and he eventually gets captured in Westminster Abbey where he's killed, this monster's killed. Um, it's a fairly straightforward story mm. but at that time it was quite exciting. Yeah and to film it all, at the, to do it live yeah, as well. Must and be, yeah. But what it is, um, it, it plays about with the idea that the aliens which he becomes, this guy, and the other two that was inside him, are out there somewhere. Mm. It's, it's all out there in space, it's nothing to do with Earth at all. It's space is the problem. And then there's another one, um, which I didn't like actually, it turned into a film. Um, Quite a Mass 2, it was called. Yeah. And basically, um, it was a film. And the guy that plays Quatermass was an American B-movie actor. So he didn't quite have that grasp of subtlety and suaveness and self-confidence. He was just an American actor playing the scientist. Um, and it, it just didn't work. But what it, what it plays with is that the aliens are here on Earth and they're searching for food and we are the food. Excellent. Right. So, um, and then there was, I think that was made in about 1956, but then came 1959, Quite a Mass and the Pit. Right. And we look at 1959 and we look at England, or Great Britain, the United Kingdom, but more so we look at London, where the pit takes place, the, the series actually develops. Macmillan, the, the English Premier, Prime Minister, came out with that big slogan, you've never had it so good. England was really pulling itself out of the, the Second World War austerity. Um, a bit like America did straight away in the Second World War. Fridges, cars, um, yeah, like we were talking housing, about three, yeah, the big buildings going up. Consumer yeah. money circulating and, and prosperity. Yeah. Massive slum clearance programs that was brought in by Labour but it slowed down because of the austerity. But there was a, a big program, um, anti-poverty um, and everything, you know, the future was bright, the future was good, felt good, people were appeared on the surface to be happy, but there's always like any culture, massive undercurrents going on. Um, and that's where the pit comes in, as this moment of growth, a moment of self-confidence. And the first episode takes place, and again, it was filmed live on BBC, Right. So it was all going out live, apart from the external films. So what you have, you have a building site. Um, now I'm going to go back. The way it starts, 
Clytemus in the pit was unique in itself because it was bloody scary. Right. It was it was quite you know so the first thing that you notice that this is going to be weird that you know the opening introduction is weird and it starts on a building site and there's all, all you know the workers are shoveling all the gravel and there's concrete guiding and what have you lots of dust and noise and this guy shouts out stop stop and they come across a skull that they've dug up so of course everything has to stop mm. in come the police um, and they can't make out what this bloody skull is it looks human but it's not human um, so they stop work and they call in the scientists who don't quite know what this skull is they've never seen one like it's it's a, it looks human Mm -hmm. but it's humanoid right, right, okay. that, that crossover between human and not human and then all around this particular skull are bones bits of bones and from those bones they put it together the skeleton and it's definitely not anything that anybody's ever seen before right but it's humanoid okay end of part one Right. Right. Now, the guy that wrote it, all these quater mass, Nigel Neil, spelt with a K, um, was a brilliant writer. He knew exactly how to manipulate the audience. Right. Now, this was a six part serial mm -hmm. that would go out every week. So he highlighted. He knew, stop it there. Mm -hmm. Let the audience think, you know, what is it? Until, you know, the following episode. And that one episode took off. It became one episode, become a massive great hit with audiences, adult audiences and little kids like me who weren't meant to watch it. Right. You know? um, probably why I actually love it, as you know. Part two comes along, and this time Professor Quatermass is virtually introduced. You do see him at, at the end of part one, right? Um, and he's brought in to investigate this mystery. This, what is this object? What is this skeleton? Never seen it before, and it's that far down in the earth. Tell us what it is. We need to know, obviously. As this is going on, these people dig down further and they come across this metal, what appears to be something metallic in the ground. But it's not metallic in the sense that nothing can stick to it. It's, it's just that we've never seen it before on Earth. Right. So it transpires I'm jumping this one here it transpires that the the skeleton is about five million years old okay right which is before we thought humans yes yeah so Quatermass comes along and says right we found the skeleton five million years old mm -hmm. here and we found this metallic object only a part of it way down below so older how old is this this object <laughs> it's more than five million years old right um so we jump about if you don't mind because it's quite complex yeah, yeah, yeah. i think people get bored listening to me but anyway the army get involved right and typical with these sky fi stories the army are stupid yeah yeah, yeah. and the, the the you know the chief of the army is convinced it's an, um, an unexploded bomb from the Second World War developed by the Nazis. Oh, to, it, you know, yes, a reasonable position for a, a military yeah, man to yeah, take, to take in the circumstances. And there's politicians who immediately says, right, we don't want this to be public. 
Yeah. It okay. has to be, you know, and the news must be controlled. Because up to that point, you know, the news was quite excited about this. There was headlines about, you know, man discovered in pit. Who is this pit man and mm. stuff like that. Um, anyway, what begins to happen, I'm going to really jump about, sorry about this. Um, cause I'm going to get involved with other things about this as well. Yeah. What begins to happen? They uncover the object. And it is definitely... A craft of some sort. Um, right. But they don't know at all what it is. So, quite a mass tries. Every, you know, they they try to drill it, they banging it, and everything. Nothing can get inside it. They need to get inside it. But quite a mass decides to. For some reason, it's in Hobbs Lane, the, all these streets, and there's one called Hobbs Lane. Mm. And he can't make out why is it called Hobbs Lane? Hob, it's the devil, isn't it? Yes, so I heard. Yes, it's all, an old word for the yeah. for the devil. Yes. So, yeah. him and his associates they begin to look into the history of Hobbs Lane, and what they discover is in the medieval period, people were being driven mad. Um, because they were seeing the devil. There were scratches on the wall, there, were, there, was, ba there was banging, there was noises, and people were you know, being driven mad. They, what is this? And then, um, he, you know, everybody still, what the hell is this all about? It's just, but then this object it sort of begins to come alive, not in a science fiction way, it, it, it might be an object, it is alive. And it, so it's not you know, just turning itself on, it might be a living. It might be, yeah, and then again, bang, you know, <laughs> <laughs> next week, next week. Anyway, they eventually get inside this machine, this inorganic object, which they still think it is. And inside the, this object, this spaceship, this thing, all these um, decomposing in giant insects sort of been trapped in there right. and they're all decomposing and dropping and you know it's, it's quite lovely that scene <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a good eerie way you right. know oh god what is going on um, so uh, as again I'm, I'm going to rush forward what begins to trans begins to unfold is that the machine is alive it's something odd about this damn machine. Oh. It's alive, as okay. I said. It's an organic object. And one night, there's this um, electrician is working in, inside with his wires. And he has a bump. <laughs> Jump. <laughs> Jump. We know that something's going to happen. And all these tools start flying around. And he begins to transform not into a monster but physically he transforms into something re resembling the humanoid that has been discovered so he's all crunched up he's still got his clothes on and he starts running down the streets as a strange sort of like crippled like figure yeah humanoid. and everywhere he goes all these objects like um, bricks and buildings and everything all start to sort of crumble wherever he goes right. and um, he eventually collapses outside the church okay. <laughs> that's where it gets typical you know and there's the priest and, and the guy is in a state of utter terror he's seen something something absolutely terrifying and things start to make sense to Quatermass which means it's not making any sense whatsoever. <laughs> you know, this should not be happening in the mm. 20th century. Yeah. What is going on is, you know, this, this can't happen. 
But one of Kreutzmacher's um, assistants is very um, attuned to sensitivity, and she feels something is going on. So she gets wired up to a machine, and her sensitivity gets very, very powerful, and she projects, or something is projected images. On, now remember, this is 1959. You know, so this is quite forward thinking. Yeah. She's projecting images onto the screen, and it's something that looks like a massacre. Uh, a massacre. Sorry, remove, remove my glasses. It's a bit like ethnic cleansing going on. Okay, right. There's a war between the insects and humanoids. Okay, oh, right. And it begins to sort of make sense is that these the spaceship and the insects have left a planet a dying planet and have come down to earth to repopulate the planet they're going to interbreed with humanoids mm. to create what was on their dying planet Right, and, and the planet was dying because of war. There was always, there was always war, 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 war. And I think this is about episode four. Right. And it slowly dawns on Kratos that oh boy, we're fucked. <laughs> Sorry to swear. You know, this is dangerous stuff now. Um, so all the medieval stuff is making sense um, and people around the ship are, are, are going a bit bonkers as well they're seeing things they're hearing things they can't make out what's going on and, and the machine seems to be developing a sort of a life of its own not a power but a life people can feel it okay they can feel something is, is not not going on is not right and it, it gets bigger and bigger and not the machine, but the power. So you're of affecting going, more yeah. people in a wider area, and that sort of thing. Basically, what happens is the machine begins to open up, glowing, glowing, glowing. And the whole of London is turned into a civil war zone. Everybody right. starts fighting each other. Okay. London is in flames. Like everyone fighting everyone else, or two yeah, there's, factions. Yeah, there's, there's gangs going around. There's gangs fighting. There's individuals fighting. Buildings collapsing. It's like the Second World War blitz, but it's all over London. Right. And it is the machine has come back to life, and it's brought the life of the dead planet back with it so it ends. So it's sort of echoing what was before yeah. and making it yeah. happen yeah. again it's, it's, it's all repeating itself right there's a circle going on it's repeat after repeat eventually you know just for an ending it it gets destroyed but and this is the this is the real bit that um, this is why it might take a bit longer and why I'm rushing a little bit. Well, have a drink of water. Um, well, yeah, it's good to get like the outline though, because then yeah. we can go back into yeah. it. We know and, what we're talking about. And other about. things about Yeah, it exactly. Well. Yeah. Because what, what then happens is that Quatermass delivers a message. Right. Which is a fairly uncompromising message. And that is, we are aliens on Earth. So how does he come to that conclusion? Basically, we've still got inside us this gene for self-destruction. Okay. Now remember, it's only a, a sky fire, but that is part of the denunciation at the end, that we are incapable of change, but as he says, there is a lesson we can learn. We must change. Otherwise, we will become a dead planet. 
Interesting. So, that's me speaking about 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. In what took three hours. Oh, yeah. To yeah. unravel. Yeah, there so, was a film made. Yes, in Hammer. the 60s, yeah. yeah. 67, was it something? I, I think it was the uh, late 60s, I think. Yeah, 67, Hammer Horror, I think, yeah. Where it takes place in, a, in an underground. Um, it, it's a good film, but it's a half and a half long. So you don't have the this what Nigel knew was absolutely brilliant about this long drawn out suspense that is beginning to unfold like a strange novel mm. um, and until the denunciation that we human beings on planet Earth are replicas of the aliens we are aliens on earth yeah so yeah right. Look, right. yeah clear this up for me a little because i don't quite understand Is okay so, yeah yeah right. so so the, the so his evidence for us being aliens from this other world is a genetic a yeah, discovery, so. genetic discovery, is that right? Uh, the, what, yeah, that we it's share it's it with organic, the thing that yeah. he found? Yeah. Or is it purely this repeated destruction that's his evidence? Or is that his conclusion well, having found separate evidence that we're descended conclusion. from the aliens? Yeah, it's a conclusion. Right, so that, yeah, that was that clear. Because of our London gets destroyed. It's, it's that conclusion. Now... I've, I've been thinking about this, um, you know, and it's quite interesting. Well, it's really echoes with because what you were talking about last week as well, in terms of the American position of this. Yeah. We're all going to go, to keep going to war, and we must stop going to war because mm. of the grand destruction yeah. and all this sort of post-war horror. But, at but the Americans always win. Yeah. They all... <laughs> They always win. Well, yeah. Yeah. There's no way. They're the hero. Yeah. They're they, a young culture as yeah. well. So yeah. Like well, why not? You know, they're exceptional. They won the Second World War. So, so I thought. But I've been thinking about this, and I'm going to throw in something for future discussion. I think Second World War, as Hitler said. He's going to do. He's going to start a war like no other war has ever been. It will be unique. Mm. Now he wasn't talking about the war in Europe. Europe was a sort of a sideshow for his master plan, and that master plan was in the east. That master plan was in Russia. Yeah. Poland first. Subhuman species. Before he went to, you know, before he went for the Jews, mm. he went for the Poles. Every yeah. intellectual, every writer, every thinker, every politician, most of the priests were murdered. Mm. Um, were completely murdered, right? Right. But then Hitler was convinced that the conquest of Russia would take five months only <laughs> well, we, we I mean, had to concentrate on his problems with that it, earlier yeah. a couple of weeks what ago he did, what he did was unique this was a war like no other mm. it was a war of annihilation mm. his words right he actually said to the german you know to the weimar you don't need food you, you just take food from the land, mm. from Russia. You murder the population. First of all, you have to murder the Jews, but don't worry about all the others. Starve them. Yeah, and, that is that is different yeah. to what had gone before, because yeah. usually... A, 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 a and he had that special call, the SS, mm. the um, Eisengruppen. Eisen, Eisen who were trained SS killers. Mm. They were told, spare no one, find the Jews and kill them. Shoot them in pits. 
Yeah, I mean, they've been put civilians in in the line of fire in a way that yeah. no previous war had. No, I mean, not on this. The pitch horrendous. battles, mm. pitch battles for political yeah. dominance. Yeah, with with certain levels mm. of and the amount of uh, violence. either professional army or back further, you've mm. got sort of. Uh, civilian volunteers in mm. defensive mm. battles but yeah to actually and annihilate the population mm. I mean there's been and those and genocides the, in history this is before the quite but yeah scary thing about this Hitler come into power in 1933 or the Nazis mm. 1933 within seven years that transformed the whole generation of young people millions of young people into a murdering machine mm. so it wasn't just the Weimar the the troops there was the young SS soldiers officers who were trained call it brainwashed or whatever but they were told continuously you are the super race mm. you are the super race you are the super race um, I'd say, forget about Europe. Russia was what you wanted. Well, there was a lot of Labans around in yeah, Russia. Were, yeah, um, and it was only later that other things happened. But of course, it couldn't. It could not succeed. It just simply because no matter what we think about the Nazis and their super efficiency and what have you, they were completely inefficient. You don't go around murdering millions and millions of people in a land the size of Russia. And the, the Nazis began to say, they keep on coming. They're like insects. They did call the Russians at the start of the war insects. Right. They're like germs. They're yeah. vermin. We kill thousands of them in one day, but still they come. So the language of dehumanization is very akin to what goes on in the pit right so there's this sort of so I'm only making an assumption by suggesting that what Nigel Neal was doing the writer was actually whether consciously or subconsciously I don't know I, I think because he was such a brilliant writer I think it was consciously he was making a reference right back to the horrors of the of, of the Eastern Front. Right. Which in terms of history at that time, not many people bothered with. You know, because it was Russia, the well, Stalinistic uh, Russia. Yeah, and, and uh, there'd been so many horrors on their yeah. doorstep. Yes, and you know, but on the scale that the Nazis perpetuating as I said, it had never on that scale, it had never, ever, ever been done before. Mm. It was so horrendous. And within that very short amount of time, within three years, most of the Eastern Europe, European Jewish culture mm. and population was exterminated. Think of it, we're talking millions of people. Yeah, and, and this yeah, is yeah. why I get angry sometimes when people say, oh, what about all these others, you know. This happened in such a short amount of time, yeah. clinically, aimed at one particular group of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me it throws up more, um, maybe moral questions about what that part of the war was about. Now, at first, it was believed that something like about 20 million Russians died. That was Stalin's figure. Wow. We now know that it was probably in the region of about 30 million Russians died between 1941 and 1945. And you think, oh shit, you know. And this is where this argument or this, maybe this discussion of that we are the aliens is worth playing with. It's also a, a, a theological so, like so, so he's sort of referencing that alien war to talk about the mm. most recent 
more. Mm. Okay. That is, that's, yes. So, I mean, these are, these are my ideas, basically. Yeah. That I've been sort of thinking about as, as, as well as I, I should have spent more time going into it. Much well, more no, deeper. That's what talking is for, formulating yeah. thought. So, I mean, in this whole structure of the pit, there's no religion. Right. There's no, there's no God. There's no spirituality. There's, there's no gods. There's By structure of the pit, what do you mean? The actual overall um, story, the actual overall feel of the story. Right. Okay. Again, if you go back to America, there's always um, a, a sort of either evangelical or a Christian motif linked to the, Amer you know, the, the American yeah, yeah. way that it comes into. In the pit, it's not. What there is, is the devil. You know, what, what there is, is the effing devil. Well, there's, a, there's a deep truth yeah, it's, to it's, that. It's this evil. Life is suffering and, mm. and, and, and human beings yeah. are capable of, of great evil. Um, now, what also made it work, I mean, I just changed it a bit, was the actor who played Quatermass, Andre Morrow, Andre Mor I think I got it right, an English character actor, right. absolutely brilliant, very suave, slightly cynical, right. um, always questioning, very aloof, and it's almost saying that he is a scientist from the Enlightenment tradition tradition yeah um, who is shredding that tradition shredding it to pieces and saying no this is not about human progress we're not progressing we got cars we got buildings we got aeroplanes Sputniks going up and Russian Americans going up to space but in terms of the Enlightenment tradition of progress of the U of science he's saying it doesn't matter because it hasn't worked we are we basically we are the aliens our, you know we don't know we don't even know ourselves so that enlightenment tradition that is scientific you know that we would develop and grow and, and gain more knowledge and more understanding more laws more equality no 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 doesn't matter because we can't achieve it so it's, so it's quite yeah, it was almost nihilistic yeah um but that's that's fascinant that hmm uh, so these are all ideas that I'm well you say yeah i mean but that is that has its own um, moralistic and religious position within it to a certain extent to say that the enlightenment philosophy and the well, sorry the enlightenment tradition that gives us the scientific method and reason all these things hasn't worked and we're not progressing is a moral position in and of itself and 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 perhaps would framed like that suggests a need for a a, a religious aspect or a return to a religious aspect perhaps that is obviously starkly not there in the writing but he's almost almost yearning for it in some way maybe it's a well i mean there is i mean in that ending that as i call it, that denunciation there is that little spark of hope that we can change yeah but then we I discussed mean, this last a, week yeah, with reference such, to the Americans a, and yeah. we can't change. That's just a mm, truth. Mm. But because is, war is eternal. Yeah, yeah. Like conflict is an eternal mm. part of the human condition. Um, like like uh, not even the human condition, just the condition of life. Like, you know, um, white blood cells fighting viruses all the way up to lions eating antelope to human beings arguing over resources it, um, I mean you could you could say that that the animal quarrels mm. 
are really over resources. I mean, their resources are much more simplified. But don't it's, forget, it's territory mm. and it's um, and it's food. But that's the, that's yeah. a, that yeah, would, but I like that them, as yeah. a universal mm. concept. But with the Enlightenment and other traditions, quite a lot of you know, um, religion. You know, the, the the classical world with their wonderful pagan religions. Mm. They always, and, and we do, we see ourselves as different from nature because we've got a consciousness. We, there, there are, yeah, there are, yeah, there, there yeah. are streams of thought mm, within it yeah. that would say that. Yeah. But yes. what, what this does, in Quatimus in the Pit, it rips that to shreds. Now, because well, I can yeah, say sitting what? here now in 2020, <laughs> yeah. like I can say that, 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 that yes, that's obviously true. Mm. That but, obviously, uh, we do see ourselves as different, but we, but mm. we know that we're so not. So we, we know that we're not. Now. So we hear that we're not. And so, like now, we've got like so. Father, that's a nice little Father Ted interlude. Well, might as well take a pause to remind everyone yeah. that you can buy our but loose leaf teas. But remember, from the this website. is only a serial, a TV serial mm. that what could you say that captured the nation? Yeah, that really captured the nation, and it was on for six weeks. Um. December into January, it skipped Christmas. Yeah, yeah. I think it was done on purpose, personally. Um, I had to get an audience. But. It's a nice long cliffhanger yeah, over Christmas, yeah. What it also led to <coughs> was some brilliant um, writings, sky fire, the music, or, or the sound effects in, in, the, in the pit are way ahead of anything that's happened before. Right. Um, Doctor Who, that music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But its effect is also, you can rebound it, um, look at Alien. Yeah. You know, tra trapped in space by this alien creature. It's so horrendous, but it has got a, it's got a remarkable brain. Mm. You know, but there's no escape from it. Mm because you're all trapped in this bubble. So in, in, in its impact, I think, upon um, popular culture at the time was, was really huge. And just on the genre of like, yeah. visual, like mm. television slash yeah. cinematic sci-fi. Yeah. And what I'm doing, I think, um, might become a little project actually, is to, it's like archeology. span Go into it more deeper. Yeah. You know, go into that period, 1959. Well, it's really, it's fascinating, yeah, because it's that post-war, like, it, the, the, it's the reverberative shocks of that experience mm. on culture, because it's had enough time to feed mm. through into culture. But I, I mean, because I think we still live with a lot of the assumptions and conclusions that were drawn in the 60s, certainly, like, that's the time you, you, these things are starting in the 50s, I guess, but the, really the 60s, I think, still has a massive effect o on our culture. I mean, from the simpleness that, like, the bands are still alive and recording to <coughs> the ideas and, like, this, yeah. I this, this idea, yeah. this we can change and we can have mm. a utopian, peaceful future, this idea still reverberates mm. around the yeah, culture. Yeah, remember the thing about the sixties as well. In this country, um, it was the first time when my generation, as the Who would say, was earning more than our parents. Mm. And then, well, it was the first. It so was towards new, the beginning of form. even really having a proper yeah. teenage a existence form. as well. A, there was this new dominant form of consumer. Yeah, consumerism. Started and I think it started that mass consumerism that we slowly developed. It did come from that period mm. because we had money. We were breaking all the rules of our parents. Yeah. We didn't, you know, um, not so much in other parts of the country, but particularly here in the south, there was this sort of, and, and it wasn't um, rock stars 
going on protest marches. Mm, it wasn't yeah. about that. It was about young people having money, spending it on drugs and clothes and music, and not giving a fuck, mm. basically. Enjoying ourselves. It's very hedonistic. Yeah. We, we was enjoying, and it was incredibly individualistic as well. Mm. See, I think, yeah, I, I'd like an opinion on this because, like, like, I always look, I always see that as a sort of natural conclusion, natural embracing mm. of the idea that 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 the greatest generation we're fighting for so in the in the war you're f they're fighting against tyranny therefore they are fighting for freedom and then the next period of time the next 20 years is the children of that like you say but almost embracing that idea of freedom and seeing how well, far you can push it to go to free love to go to all the as you well, say drug sex yeah, rock and roll well, the free love and, and, in, and uh, the individuality thing but, yeah, it seems yeah, like but, like a, a yeah, it's a, a, a well, testing free, how yeah. far that idea can be pushed. But the free love thing and the hippie movement, that was a very middle class, almost aristocratic. Okay. Because their parents could pay for their little revolutionary ide ideology. <laughs> That's very much like the current yeah. crop of yeah. middle class revolutionaries. Yeah, you know, there was this sort of, you know, so what we, as mods, we were just, you know, we was out to, uh, we didn't get a toss. Yeah. We knew that all the demos and everything um, up until about 68 was crap. Um, but it's like the Who said, hope I die before I get old. Yeah, what's that about? Teenage Rebellion. Yeah. Now, okay. the, now the Who were quite unique for those few years before they become a super band. I mean, I love the Who with all their madness and contradictions and what have you, but they had a particular language. And I remember when I first heard them, I thought it was the only group that I could say, they're speaking to me. <laughs> and that happened to a lot of mods, not the Stones. The Stones were all, all, always seen as a bit, a bit wanky actually. Right. Like the Kings, they were a bit too conservative. But the who had a language that spoke to a particular type of teenager. Mm. Hope I die before I get old is one of them. So just what, just just live it, yeah, love live it, it, enjoy yeah. it, yeah. enjoy the moment and hang the consequences. Mm. I just want to and there's a there's a head. And, and, and the old thing there. about substitute, I'm a substitute for another guy. We all knew what that meant. We all knew that there was a lie being told somewhere. But, you know, we had money and they were talking to us and we, it's almost like, well, you know, I mean, Townsend was a poet, he is a poet. So he, he knew how to use that and they managed to speak to us in the nightclubs, in the, you know, where we were hanging out. They was our group. Um, you know, you would sort of listen to the stones and enjoy their music. But they're never part of, of, of that mod culture in a big way, like who were. I'll probably get shot for saying that, but uh, get shot for saying most yeah. things nowadays. I feel yeah, it's like you know, it. nothing gets in my way, not even locked doors. <laughs> you know, yeah, man, yeah. So yeah, so that's what. What is that? What is that culturally? That's a. You say teenage rebellion. Fine. That <laughs> that's the beginning of it. All there's it's all subsequent generations of teenagers have rebelled in some manner or other. So like, but you're talking about. Coming at the, the, the uh, coming, uh, the, the, the so called boomer generation, really, isn't it? It's the baby boom post war. Find what finding freedom and embracing it, but then not caring at the same time. Well, like, what's their freedom? Hmm, what's their really freedom? Well, I mean, we all, all right, broke, I mean, I, I broke from my parents, I broke from King's Cross and mm. sort of discovered um, Soho and the nightclubs. But it was defined by style. You couldn't just walk into it. So, okay. You know, you had to have style for a start. You had to that's in invent. group, out group. Yeah, that's you had to, what? you know, you had to be a sort of 
you know, you join a, a particular state. Is that a, is that a superficial? Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't you had you weren't associated with a gang. You were associated with a club. With a a club, a nightclub. Right. Oh, okay. And with me, it was the scene. You know, to say to people, you're part of the scene, right. which was in um, just off of Wardour Street. Wow. Right. You know, but that only lasted for about a year because there were consequences that came down the line. And that was drug addiction, alienation, suicide, loneliness, terror. Well, yes. Yeah, so I suppose what's that's that's the the hedonism. That was that's, yeah. That's that, was, the that, that was us who, who, who believed in the hedonistic lifestyle. Most, of, the vast majority of that generation went off back to work. So just kind of it, it was a weekend that kick, yeah. for a bit. Yeah. To taste it, to taste mm. that, mm. touch that. It was a weekend Anarchy kick. or mm. or fun or. Mm embracement of the possibilities I mean, we were that were now superior. laid down in a yeah. we were reasonably so su- structured and safe environment mm. because we were superior mods we don't live in superior st- yeah we don't live in the straight world we haven't got jobs although we could get jobs anytime we wanted but we don't need that because this is us this is our lifestyle last a year before the real horror of that hedonistic um, lifestyle come to an end basically a lot of people I mean don't forget what that period developed was a whole different culture mm. vibrant fashion magazines well, yeah, yeah. vibrant colour vibrancy um, looking outwards um, but some of us just took it to an extreme oh. uh, you know hedonistic you know nothing gets in my way not even locked doors mentality who again? You're always going to need a small extreme in some form of change, in some form of new mm. movement, to, to really take it to its conclusion. Although that's quite German culturally. I mean, this is, mm. you know, take an idea to its logical conclusions. That's how you end up gassing mm. millions of Jews. But that aside, you so so there's a small group who've really embraced it and you say it lasts about a year but then there must be a, a for the wider group like what's the change there what did that what does that bring about in the wider culture like I mean you're still I say you, we've got a couple well, of movies that say. we've talked about that are mm. uh, that are, that are uh, flinging into the, the ed- mm. looking at that but but, well, yeah, but you could on. say that that mod culture of rampant individualism Mm. was the forerunner to Thatcherism because we wouldn't we wouldn't join trade union movements right yes rampant individualism I think is a phrase I want to remember like that's a really so the Mm. the mod Mm. being the rampant individualist because that's that's Again, looking now, all the mm. cultural reverberations mm. of rampant individuals, and we'll jump into Thatcher in the mm. middle of it quite I- I- in a sec, but just to come to now, I think we have some problems there, like, because you've got, again, it's, it's back to this enlightenment idea, and, and maybe where it goes wrong in some ways, because you look at people like Mill and, and Locke, and you, you look at these ideas of the individual and you know, so that idea coming out of the sanctity of the individual coming from Christian teaching, lead, which leads to the environment, you know, God, everyone is valuable in God's eyes, leads to individual liberty, leads to abolition of slavery, leads to, um, where are we now, uh, where, where we're talking about now is in the 60s and the and the individual there's a slight crisis going on once you but but so so now selfishness is the word I'm looking for yeah like it's really important to sanctify the individual so that the individual isn't tyrannized but at the same time it can accidentally lead to a level of selfishness which can I think we're seeing it a bit now we, 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 my, my rights, mm. my rights, my rights, my rights, it's all about my rights. 
yeah. which can well, lead to a societal a problem yeah. and a yeah, breakdown that's, that's of community a, and cohesion mm. and, and, and helping each other and... and, and uh, well, some of my values... The, uh, the balance <coughs> is lost yeah. a little somewhere. I mean, some of my values now, I think, could be said that um, they still arc back to King's Cross. Yeah. Um, thinking about the other person. Um, community cohesion, which I escaped from. I, I, I didn't like its conservatism. You know. Even when I was 16, it was, it was doing my head in. Um, and how would you define it back then, it, its conservatism? What are you, what are was, you running it, away from? They, they didn't want... I felt at that time... Oh! I felt at that time that um, nothing was changing. My life was planned out. I was going to be an apprentice. Um, I would either be a painter and a decorator or a bricklayer. My brother was at um, Smithfield Meat Market. Our lives were dictated by our class because um, it was a very tightly class structured society mm. in, in that period. And I, I wanted oh, no part of it. For a very long time before that. Yeah, I wanted no part of it. Right. at all but there was this strange thing coming up called youth culture mm. nothing to do with although, although some of it, I mean obviously started in youth clubs and what have you but a lot of it was um, developing around Brighton um, various cafes were beginning to open and then you had the arts labs mm. be, all, all being semi-organised by young people What's all that? questioning um, and questioning themselves as well so it was something new because that as, as Bob Dylan said and I still love Bob Dylan you know the old that old world was stagnating it, it was um, I think it stagnated too far in, in terms of closing down so many industries all at once but I was not part of that, you see, that mob movement I was part well, of. I think, yeah, it's that a function of prosperity though, because you've got a, you've got more, not just, not just the young people having more money, but, but the stability post-war, as you say, the Macmillan pulling, mm. pulling the country out, there's more prosperity, and as you become more prosperous as a society, you have more freedom, too simple a word, but, um, uh, space, mm. more and space all, for mm. leisure, more space for thought, because you're not the man who has to go and work in the factory mm. six days a week just to make sure his family doesn't starve. Suddenly, you've got a bit more money, therefore you've got a bit more consumer culture, therefore you've got just a bit more space. Your and, labour is worth and, and more, going, yeah, and, so you've got more leisure time to, to consider. And, <laughs> And, and going those back other in, pursuits, yeah. arts, and and, and and going back into that that period um, of, of the really early sixties, you had some great playwrights, working class playwrights coming through. Oh yeah, that whole period. Joe yeah. Joe, uh, Joe Os Osborne. Yeah. yeah. Look back in anger and. Yeah, that's a weird one. But you had you know you had those great in, um, working class actors um, coming forward. Um, Films made up north, those gritty, in, in factories, and you know, they were very gritty. Mm. Alien to me, but I, I love them. There's a man coming with a dog, I love them. But alongside that, you had other films, um, like the, 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 you know, the first one to explore homosexuality. Mm. God, what's his name? Dirk Bogart. Um, where he played a lawyer who was being blackmailed. But, you know, it was a bit weak, but it was the first to explore homosexuality. And then, of course, you had this really classic film. Um, oh, God. It was written by my... We're off the subject on this one. Um, it'll come I don't to think me. we're ever off the subject. Yeah, I think the subject we, just but, rolls around Yeah, and us. here we go. We, this is where you can bring it back to the pit. Mm. I mean, the pit was coming in there as, as a cultural phenomenon, um, and it was opening up new ideas in terms of electronic music, in, in terms of presenting um, live performances on, uh, you know, 
you know, to go out live mm. and challenging new ideas, mm. no matter how um, sky far they were, but they were new ideas. Mm. And from that, all these other little industries grew up. I mean, the big one, of course, is, is Doctor Who. Yeah, I mean, that, be, that was a phenomenon when it yeah. came out. I mean, I, I still remember one of them when the dialects come out of the River Thames. It was like, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And those early ones were, okay, again, wooden, um, a bit clunky, but the ideas were brilliant. Oxford Street, there was one where Oxford Street, um, on a Saturday morning, all the dummies come to life in shop windows. And that's how they relaunched it, of yeah. course, with yeah. Christopher Eccleston yeah. after they've been dead for 12, 15 yeah. years. Was, was dummies in shop windows coming mm. back, like they took that? The Cybermen, wasn't it, or something? Um, so, no, yeah, oh, yeah that's, no, that's not the Cybermen. It's the so there were these oh, quiet, you know, in, in, in terms of, it, it, it wasn't, and, and of course you had La Jette, Yeah. which, you know, so it wasn't all dominated by America. Yeah. The European mindset was far more pessimistic because See, they were closer to, you know, France had been occupied. Yeah. They knew about, you know, what it was to live under Nazi occupation. We had the blitz. We were within, a, we were within an afternoon of being occupied, yeah. basically. We were, yeah, and we had the blitz. So therefore, why not, as Quatermass does, that series, uh, uh, in the last episode, blow up London? Which, which happens. Oh, you didn't mention that in the Yeah, rundown. I did, yeah. Oh, I missed oh, that. London, so that yeah. like you said London. crumbling, but the whole yeah. thing just what, yeah. destroyed completely? Yeah. yeah. Wow. You know, I didn't take, uh, I, I what they do, what, what happens in there is, is you have an aerial shot that the, um, one of the American um, commentators spoke about London being um, on its own, but it would never fall. It's a wonderful speech in the Blitz. Um, and, and, and they use that as London on fire. You know, so they're playing about with that genre as well. Mm. I mean, the Second World, you could, yeah. I mean, that's why I went back to Russia. Mm. It, it, you know, the Second World War was still impacting. Mm. Oh, yeah. And there's, there's still quite, you know. Undoubtedly, and that's yeah. why our parents, I don't think, ever spoke about the war. Mm. My old man, my father, never ever celebrated the, the Second World War. All right, you're going to need to, to unpack this London being destroyed a bit for me, I think. So, like, to your mind, in why make that artistic choice of the, in the pit? Why make that cho that choice as the end of it at that point in, in, 50, in the series, 59? Yeah. yeah, in um, 59. What? Because like, it's a bloody good story, right? And it's <laughs> just like, but, but, but said, we yeah. lose, and it's a pet. Mm. I mean, does does. I mean, so, so, was, he's got, we're was, gonna, so he's got. So he's saying we can't. Yeah. <laughs> he's saying we're always going to repeat ourselves. Sort of. And yeah. But we, remember, we by using those images, change. it was a, it was a touch and go. By using the the image of the Blitz, at, you know, towards the end. Yeah. Of that series, it was like. You know, you might really people fucking. You know, people yeah. went through that. Blitz, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and what he's saying at the end of it, that, that you know, we are the aliens. Um, so he. You know, it was a very bold. Yeah, that is. You know, that's really it, now, it was a very bold, but slightly dangerous um, <sighs> move to make. When the BBC had some bottle, eh, Alfie? Um, yeah. But I, I, does so. So where does it go from there? Does he? Do, do, is it? Is it? Are we left with a destroyed capital? You're you left know, with the denunciation. So that the so that the pit. The pit is destroyed. The pit alien. Oh, right, so the pit is destroyed. Yeah. London is destroyed. People have, have, have turned against each other. Um, and it would be and so the, what, the victory of 15 years ago is for, is for naught, then, <laughs> um, in some ways? You could, yeah, you could argue. Well, I think at the time, um, the, the way it ended, it was like it, you know, things will sort themselves out. So, so you're saying is it had the pessimism, but it but it still yeah, has some hope that we'd yeah, be okay. Sort of, you know, we've still got a chance. Right. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's really dark. <coughs> so, shall we end it on that one? Oh uh, yeah, I think that's saying. It seems like a reasonable place to stop. That was that was. I, this is a fascinating period. 
like this whole mm. like art culture and history. I think we're we're far enough removed to, mm. to, to to really try and work out what it meant and what it means now. I mm. think like I still think yeah we we didn't get to. We must remember to talk about the eighties then with the, with individual next week. Maybe if we're talking about individuality again, in the, and the, yeah, and the well, leap yeah, from the mods yeah. to the yuppies mm. to the I don't even know what we'd call them now. I might make a new romantics. Well, yeah, but yeah, but the the, the hyper individualists now. I don't know where they are. Hello, Hello. You, you've been playing tennis, darling. <laughs> Right, but yeah, so, let's yeah. let's wrap it up. I'd like yeah. to remind everyone that if you go to the website www.teahousetheatre.co.uk, you can indeed order some fabulous loose leaf teas delivered uh, for the moment, at, at least as an introductory offer. Uh, UK carriage pays, so no delivery. Uh, please, if you like this video, click the li uh, or this audio, click the like on the YouTube. That's the thumbs up thing. Subscribe to the channel so that you can. Here are exciting yeah. <coughs> ramblings every Sunday afternoon and the other things that are coming and out of the Tea House Theatre. introductions to bigger ideas and yeah, bigger man. conversations. This is, this this is, is only is, the third one. This is only the third one and it's been delightful. So please subscribe to the channel and then you'll get me and Alfie in your inbox or your notifications if you click the right buttons every Sunday. So yeah, no, that was grand Alfie. I'll, I'll see you next week. Cheers, Freddie. Cheers, folks. Let's see if it works. Please.